Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I've always taken a lot of pride in the town I come from. You know, I, I was raised down here in Nettleton. I was born at Jonesboro. But uh, this, this is the Nettleton that I remember. This is from in the 1950s. That's a little bit older than I am. I, uh, I graduated here in 68. But this is the way I remember downtown Nettleton when I first saw it, when I was growing up. The post office was over here. The shoe store was here. I used to get my hair cut over a place called Lepo's Barbers. And then there was um, a cafe down here. And the bus stop was here. And there wasn't, there wasn't a post office down in this part then. It was just a, that was a little playground that we played in. This is the old bank of Nettleton, and here's a telephone booth. And then, of course, this is, this is back years, about 1908. And this is one side of Nettleton. That's the bank of Nettleton or George's Jewelry, girls. Y'all probably know where George's Jewelry is on Nettleton. That's where it is. This is where a vacant lot is or where the old Keach Hotel is. And that's Craig Miller's dog out in the middle of the Main Street right there. So, see, even Craig's a little older than he thinks he is. Now, I, I, I love history. I've always enjoyed history. And someone said, well, why do you do history? Because yeah, I, I love sports. Sports is statistics. Well, history statistics. I'm, I'm vice president of the Historical Society. This is my Confederate uniform. I have a Yankee uniform. I do Civil War reenacting. And this is my George Washington uniform that I do when I uh, present colors for the uh, uh, color guard for the sons of the American Revolution. But then... Um, I used to be bald, I'm going bald again, but most of y'all, one thing, when I, when I had teachers come to school, it was hard for me to relate to them because they're so much older. You know, I'm old enough to be your grandfather, your great-grandfather. But uh, this is what I looked like back in 1949. And your name is important, just like the, the town of Nettleton, it's important. Where, where, where do the names come from? My first name's William, I was named after a grandfather. You know, it took a little bit of thought about where I was named. And my mother liked the song Danny Boy. And so she named me Danny. Well, when I'd come to school, there was an uh, a, um, advisor by the name of Ivan Stone that Ivan would make me come to the principal office about every year and say, you cannot use a nickname. Your name is Daniel. I said, no, my name is Danny. And I would have to bring my birth certificate to the school every year to show it to them that my name was Danny, not Daniel. So take a lot of pride in what your name is and, and do some family research uh, on, on your family to find out where your family came from. I've always in love, loved history. I've always enjoyed guns and stuff. And, and uh, when I was growing up, we went to all kinds of historical places. And uh, as you can see, uh, even when I was a little pudgy guy, I, I like carrying a gun. Now, I'm twice the man that I used to be, guys. And back when I wore this, if you touch the rim, technical foul. If you, if you dunk the ball during warm-ups, you was kicked out of the game. You could not dunk and you could not touch the rim. But uh, I enjoyed playing basketball here. Uh, my senior year, we went uh, 20 and 11, we went to state tournament. Uh, but I always enjoyed playing base, baseball and basketball. But we always already talked about these photos here. But where did the name Nettleton come from? Did it just fall out of the sky? No. There was a guy that owned a railroad company out of Kansas City, the Kansas City Fort Scott Memphis Railroad. He was a very wealthy man. He was born in Massachusetts. He lived at Hannibal, Missouri for a while, and one of his friends was Mark Twain. So the guy that Nettleton was named after was buddies with Mark Twain. Uh, because of the livestock industry and the lumber industry around Kansas City and the, the, the frugal uh, timbers of the South, he wanted the, the railroad to come through the South. So they picked this area for the railroad to come through. Now this is Mr. Nettleton here. And there's his autograph. I, I, I like autographs and stuff. That's how he signed his name. But uh, how many of y'all ever been to Mammoth Springs going through Thayer, West Plains? Well, right here is a hotel that they had at Mammoth Springs. They don't have anything at Mammoth Springs that big today. It was a fine looking hotel, but it burnt in the 1920s. And they said when Mr. Nettleton died that there was 10,000 people went to his funeral. He was so loved because he was just, he was just a good guy. But uh, railroads was important to the region. You know, Early on, our ancestors used the, the rivers and stuff to go up and down rivers, but uh, the first railroad came through here was the Iron Mountain Railroad that came north and south from this way, that way. And you can see the names of the town. There's Jonesboro, spelled B-O-R-O-U-G-H, Borough. And around 1900, they changed it to uh, B-O-R-O. And of course, there was, there's Greenfield, which is south of Jonesboro. 
This is up toward where Sage Meadows is. It's called Newport at Bucks North Hill. And some of y'all know of the name Greensboro because there's a couple of historical signs up there. But uh, up at Greensboro, they had uh, doctors, lawyers, hotels. But that was the main highway through there was that Highway 351. But when the railroads bypassed it, it went away. <coughs> and see, this is Mr. Nettleton's railroad that came through here, the Kansas City Fort Scott Railroad that made an X where Jonesboro is, but it also made an X right here's Nettleton. And here's a little railroad called the JCL and E going toward Leechfield. And these are all the stops on the JC, I mean on the Kansas City Fort Scott Railroad going down to Birmingham, Alabama. And down in this region right here, if you look real close, there's a little town called Nettleton, Arkansas, or Nettleton, Mississippi. And over in here, there's a Nettleton, Arkansas. Then up in here, there's a Nettleton, Missouri, Nettleton, Kansas, Nettleton, Nebraska. There was like six towns named after Mr. Nettleton. He was so, you know, we'd go through an area. Well, in 1884, this is an application to put in a post office at Nettleton, calling it uh, the Nettleton Post Office. And of course, most people called it Nettleton Station. These are letters that was postmarked from Nettleton in 1894. And then here's in 1958, the year that Nettleton was annexed into Jonesboro, it says Jonesboro, Arkansas, Nettleton Station. Well, see, this was like a work spot for the railroad men to, to stop off and get their supplies. Well, then their families would write letters to Nettleton so they, they could get their, their letters from their loved ones. And uh, this is the layout of Nettleton. You see, that's Church Street. Um, I can do it better off this one. That's, that's Church Street or Boydston. And then uh, the school is... Uh, kind of, or the school's right over here. There's Manila Street. There's Court Street. I had to get my bearings. But right there, oh, here's where the school is. But it was laid out, and this is what the town looked like in, in about 18, I mean 1908. This is the old Finley house. It's uh, in front of where the old cafeteria used to be, where there's a vacant parking lot now. And this is, was the old Rackley house. My grandmother lived down in this house. The Methodist Church is right here. And if you went down here and went down Court Street to the right, was where the Baptist Church was. But this was taken out of the a building I'll show you in a minute. And this is the mill town where a lot of the work went on down in Nettleton. And again, here's the X, and here's Nettleton, and that's the JCL and E. But uh, before the Keaches came here, Nettleton had a lot of activity. It talks about burglars at Nettleton, and talks about the hotel and post office burned here in 1888. The Keaches didn't get here until 1892. And this is how they laid out downtown. It shows the different, uh, where they subdivided the lots and everything. And this side wasn't de developed as much then. This is Mr. Keach, Ferdinand Keach, and his wife Rosa. And the, the significant thing about him, I used to think this was an old man, but this, he was 62 years old when this picture was made. I'm 63, so uh, he came down here from Ohio. Most people retire when they get my age. He came down here with his family and started a bunch of businesses, uh, barrel factories, shingle factories, uh, staves, which makes the, the slats for the barrels. They even built a ho the Keach Hotel, and this is before the Bank of Nettleton was built there. But uh, there's Craig with his bicycle out there in front of it right there. <laughs> I think that's flat right there, Craig. You need to fix that tire. That's a good but shot to me. <laughs> but uh, this is another photograph of it. You can tell it's a pretty majestic looking building for a town in Nettleton hit size. And this is another one of Main Street. And uh, if you look right close, I think it says Pardue's right here. This was Pardue's department store. This is the Bank of Nettleton, and of course there's a lot of other businesses on the other side. And these buildings down here were some of the original houses built at Nettleton. When the Keaches lived here, they lived on Watt Street, and then they, they built some larger homes I'll show you right here. Uh, the Shawfer House, the Twitch, oh, is, that's by the Methodist Church, and this is the uh, Frank Keach House, and there's the Methodist Church, and, and uh, th that's this house on the opposite side of the street there. This one is on Boydston down there, and this was on the corner of, it's got that wrought iron fence, it's at the corner of Nettleton Avenue and Boydston. But they built some pretty good looking houses. But this is how some of the original houses looked. 
This has since been torn down, and this is a house that's still over on uh, Willow Road uh, today that shows the style of houses that was built here. That's the Methodist Church, and this was built about 1959. I remember when it was built. And this is the Baptist Church. It was at the corner of Court and Nettleton, and this is how it looks today. And this was the Church of God, and, and this is the Church of God over on Willow, I mean Ray Street now. That's the Church of Christ. And this was the original Church of Christ, which was on Thorn Street. But uh, when I came to the school two or three times, since we have a big school reunion every two years, I saw this logo and it was very fitting. Uh, it, the school was established in 1896, and I liked the uh, graphics on this wooden carving, and I thought it was pretty neat. But this is one of the original schools and the original classes in, eight, uh, in 1905. This is behind George's Jewelry. Uh, on School Street, and then you can see the couple broken out windows. Uh, that that was the type of air conditioners they had back then. And th this was the landmark in this area. It was built in 1908, and you can see the cupola that had the school bell in it. That was torn off by a tornado in the 1920s, but it was a pretty majestic looking building for its time. But you know, you think about Nettleton School. It's made up of a bunch of annex schools. You you talk about. Wiener's getting annexed into Harrisburg now for various reasons. Well, back then, you had all these small country schools that only went to the sixth grade. Well, you, you, you wanted to get a higher education. Nettleton didn't start graduating seniors till 1937. There was a guy named Vernon Smith that graduated to the 10th grade and got a diploma, and his dad found out that he was going to have 11th grade, so he sent him back the next year, year so he got 11th grade diploma. So they found out they was going to do 12th grade, so he came back another year, so he's got three diplomas from Nettleton. And there's a guy named Neil Phillips that went to school at the Phillips School that it was a free school for him to go to. Well, if you didn't live in the Nettleton School District, you had to pay to come to the Nettleton School District. Well, Neil, the, the, the teacher, lived with the Phillips family, and so he would just ride the school with the, the teacher to get out away from the parents, well, you know, because they had to go out and work in the fields. So he went to the sixth grade or eighth grade three times because, you know, he went early to school, so he, he caught up with the classmates in age, but he went to th the eighth grade three times, and then Nettleton annexed Phillips. This is really called the Phillips Nettleton School District, the official name of it, but they've dropped the Phillips for some reason. But, you know, there's, if, I don't know if you know where Frog Pine is, it's down close to the community of App, and then there's this Prospect School. That's an apartment complex now. And guys, this was, our, this was our plumbing. This is our outdoor toilet. We had outdoor toilets on this campus that you had to use because the plumbing was so bad. And this is a typical picture of a family. Uh, lumber was a big bean here in Dentleton. And then uh, this is how they would cut the lumber. This is how they would make flat boards out of a log that size. And they'd make ax handles out of one that size. And this is the, the cemetery that we call the Nettleton Cemetery. It's also called Ferndale. And there's another one called the Old Nettleton Cemetery that's over around uh, Kathleen Street and Mitchell Street. And if you drive through the yards with your cars, there has been cars that fell in the graves over there because they built the houses and some of those apartments on top of graves. Uh, Haley's Comet was a big deal. You know, there's a comet coming through now that uh, they say that Around uh, 6 o'clock this afternoon, you can look to the west. There's going to be a crescent moon. You can see a comet go through. And doing my research in 1911, there's the big talk of Nettleton was the comet that was coming through, Haley's Comet. And then it came back through in, in 1986. Well, you know, most of y'all will be as old as I am when the comet comes back through. It comes through every 75 years. But this is how, these are the people that own the land around Nettleton. And here's some of the Keach names. They own land. And uh, McKnight's, uh, Chitwood, Harvey's, uh, Ferguson. Uh, these are probably some names that some of their descendants goes to school here at Nettleton. Uh, this is, uh, these little dots, that's where the houses are. And if you uh, line up, I always have to get my bearings straight here on this thing. Uh, this road right here, that's North Street or Arch Street off of Highland Drive. If you go down Arch Street to the end of it, it's a dead end street, uh, you see this uh, toward the end of it. But if you look real close, there's a, there's a concrete banister there. Well, that's a highway banister over in a residential area of Nettleton. 
Well, what, who put that banister there? Well, the highway department did because it was a highway going to Brooklyn. And it went right across what we call the airport. At Net you know, the airport's over in this area. I'll show you a different graphic of it. But you can go down Arch Street and there's two concrete banisters down there. And you think about a car hitting one of them banisters. You know, now we got a metal banisters that give just a little bit. Them are solid concrete that was very destructive to vehicles. This is supposedly the first train going to Lake City out of Nettleton. You can see them offloading supplies on this wagon. And this is a train coming through Nettleton in about 2000 when I was doing this layout here. And this is the Bank of Nettleton, another shot of it. And this is the Pardue's department store. This is inside the Bank of Nettleton. It's got all kinds of calendars and pictures on the wall. This is the Bank of Nettleton that I remember uh, from 1968. And it's different than other pictures of Bank of Nettleton. I worked for a phone company, so it was very interesting to me. Uh, I think these guys are working on the electric here. But this is the phone book from Jonesboro and Nettleton, and it was that thin. This is 1944. You know what the phone book today is about that thick. So it was, it was quite, and this is some of the original operators that worked down here at Nettleton. Arkansas State University, if you look real close, it says Nettleton, Arkansas on these. And I, I was telling Craig that I guess Jonesboro stole Arkansas State from us, but there was a published by the Norris Drug Store here in Nettleton. So they had some postcards made to sell, so they had Nettleton, Arkansas put on the, the Arkansas State ones. These are, one's the girls' dorm, one's the boys' dorm. One, one is called Lewis Hall, and I forget the other one. That's the administration building, and that was the three buildings that was on that campus in about 1915. Uh, this is some of the factories that was down in Nettleton. This is an advertisement for shingles for the Ferdinand Keach uh, stave mill. This is a rice pump out in the middle of a rice field and everything. And this is from about 1910. This is Ferdinand or Frank Keach writing someone how good the rice is in this region. <coughs> Railroad tracks was very important. The X that is made up here in Nettleton, uh, this this. This is the depot for the Fresco Railroad Company, Railroad Track Company. And then, uh, no wait, this, this is the Iron Mountain Railroad Depot. This is the Frisco one. This is where it makes the X uh, north of where the crossing is there at Nettleton. And then we had a big train wreck here in 1907. And the, the, the X is down this part. That's the locomotive. And it happened at like 9.30 at night and there was a, Dave McNair was killed in the wreck. What would you do back then? They didn't have the lights and the signals for everyone to see. The, you would pull your train up there and you'd blow your whistle once or twice. You'd blow it so many times, you'd listen for someone to blow back. If you didn't hear no one blow back, you'd blow another time and you'd start through the crossing. Well, evidently someone didn't hear it and this catastrophic accident happened. Uh, picking cotton was a big deal. I, I picked cotton uh, to go to school. We'd pick cotton to make money to buy our clothes, blue jeans and shirts to go to school. Whatever money that I didn't spend on clothes, well, I could go to the fair and blow the rest of it, and that's what I did. But we had split terms. You know, it was so hot during the summertime, they would let us out during part of it to, to pick cotton and stuff, and we was out during the summertime when it was so hot. And uh, we had baseball back then, but then when we quit having split terms, we quit having baseball. Uh, they, they dug a well downtown Nettleton looking for oil, and they found it, but it wasn't high-grade enough oil. But can you imagine if they'd have found oil here, we'd had oil up wells all over the place. Uh, there was a historical marker put up uh, in honor of the sunken lands. When the earthquake happened in 1811 and 12 up at New Madrid, the ground sunk over around Lake City and Monette, and the, the, they said that you can dig down and find the tops of trees, 200 or 100-foot-tall trees, that it sunk, sucked them trees into the sandy loam and everything. But there was a historical marker put there in 1937, uh, and we don't know what happened to the historical marker. It was, it was at the corner of 18 and 63 when he put it up. This is the first basketball team that they had at Nettleton, uh, the organized basketball team, I should say. It was the Nettleton Oreos. Their, their colors was uh, orange and black. Uh, so... But uh, the lettering on these jerseys was orange. And this, this was with the superintendent of Nettleton when I went to the school here. That's Gerald Watkins. And this is Neil Phillips. He died last year. He was the last 
living guy of this basketball team. Had beauty queens from down in Netherland that made the Jonesboro Sun. Uh, one of them's a Pardue and one's uh, Mr. Hale. He was president of the bank. Back when I went to school here, it was like Andy at Mayberry, you know, if you watch um, Andy Griffith's show. When I'd walk to school, I'd walk by the bank president and he'd say hi to me and the guy going to the post office, he'd say hi to me. You know, I, you know, I, I walked from uh, what y'all call Highland Drive. It was East Lake City back then. But you know, we had some pretty good athletes from back in Netherlands. This guy played Major League Baseball. His name was Ed McGee. He only played four years, but how many years have we had in Nettleton? And this is the only guy that we've ever had to make uh, pro, pro baseball. But uh, he hit three home runs. He played for the White Sox and the Athletics during the 40s and 50s. This guy was a pro pretty prolific basketball player. He held the record at Arkansas State for scoring for years. Uh, he was over six foot tall, but his arms was extremely long for a guy of his height and everything. Yeah, and he was a very good jumper too, but he held the record for m most points at Arkansas State for years. And then we even had a guy that was seven foot tall that played ball here at Nettleton. And see, here he is in the ninth grade. He's six foot nine. This kid's doing chin ups off his arm. But uh, you can see this guy is about six six, and you can see how much taller he is. And of course, the, the one of the best ball players we had out here was Jerry Rook. He holds all the records out of ASU. He played ball before there's a three pointer, and uh, he scored like 2,500 points out of ASU. And they said that he probably would have had another 800 points if the three-pointer was in. Uh, this was my high school basketball coach. This is when he was in the 10th grade, and he was leading the district in scoring at that time. Uh, he was six foot five. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys tried to get him to tr come to try out because uh, he wasn't really built like a basketball player. He, he was a pretty stocky guy and everything. He, he was my high school basketball coach. And one of the football players that came out here was Wayne Dorton. He was a senior. When I was a sophomore, he played at Arkansas State and he played in uh, the Canadian Football League and I think he even played for the New Orleans Saints at one time. Uh, this is one of the older baseball teams. Like I said, we quit having baseball during the years that I went to school here. And this is Coach Bridger. He was one of my high school basketball coaches. I think his grandson goes to school down here now. And this is the hot dog stand that was across the street that's pretty notorious that uh, most people don't like uh, cafeteria schools you could sneak across there and get you a hot dog or a hamburger if you didn't get caught by the principal. But uh, this is what the roads looked like in the 1930s and 1920s and what the bridges looked like. But this is another depot that they had over around Highway 18. This was for the JCL and E. And this is their main depot that was down in, Nettleton, or down in Jonesboro at the corner of Johnson and Main Street. Uh, they, they tore that down in the 1930s. But another famous happening that made world or all across the United States, a girl wore shorts out in public and the mayor of Nettleton had her arrested for indecent exposure. So they took her to court and she had on this kind of wraparound dress and during the proceedings, she stood up and took that dress off and had her shorts on and caused another disturbance. But uh, some, of these, some, uh, the, the, some of these clippings made the Chicago New Tribune the New York Times, the Washington Post, it went nationwide, this girl wearing shorts in the town of Nettleton. And they had a, a civilian conservation corps, the CCC camp, the guys would build railroads, uh, roadbeds and, and dams, plant trees around here during the 1930s, to, to, uh, during um, President Roosevelt's uh, WPA programs. And when they came to Nettleton, they had to put their shirts on. They could not come into town without a shirt on. Because Nettleton, this, this, this guy right here, Mayor Cow, was pretty stiff back on that. This is an early basketball team that, that uh, won a tournament. This is what the kids looked like in that, back in the 1940s that went to school here. And this is the, the main building, like I called it. Uh, the cupola's gone off the top of it there. They added on the back of it. This was our cafeteria. And of course, it's a small building, of course it was a small campus. The grade, when I graduated there was 56, my graduating class, but we had eaten shifts, you know, like the first through third grade, third through sixth grade. That, that's an old uh, barracks out of a, uh, off from Newport, Arkansas. And we had uh, cab service down in Nettleton. 
We had bus service that came through Nettleton, pick you up and take you to Jonesboro or at Arkansas State. We had a movie theater that was put in downtown. You could go to the movie theater and it, uh, it, it was even air conditioned at one point in time, but it was a focal point in downtown. This is my grandfather's feed store, the stockyard that they had in Nettleton where the people would sell their livestock. And the last train that went out of Nettleton was 1949 that went to Lake City. It was called the, the, the last run of the moose. And this is another basketball team out of Nettleton. And uh, you sing the alma mater, but do you, you know where the alma mater came from? This guy's name was J.D. Coker. He was principal when I went to school here. They, he was hired on here as a, as a math teacher. When he got to working here, they said, well, we want you to teach bookkeeping. Well, he didn't know anything about bookkeeping, so he got books and learned that. Well, they needed a Spanish teacher, so he, he took Spanish and, and he taught Spanish. Well, they said, well, we need a choral teacher, so he got a song book. So he got in his song book was the choral alma mater song or, or the music for it. So some of the cheerleaders and the girls in the choral group got together and they came up with these songs in about 1952 and that's where your alma mater song comes from that you sing today. This is Shirley Wheeler. She lives down here on the corner of Boydston and uh, Manila Street today and she's one of them to help do the song. Now this is what the campus looked back, looked like in like the early 1950s. That's the annex. That's the, what I call the high school when I went here. That's the old two-story building. There's the gym. That's the cafeteria and that's the ag building. That's the complete campus. Well, down here is um, where the high, uh, the, well, that's where the high school was for a while. What y'all call the high school is basically here and we're basically right over here. And I used to pick cotton right out in this field. They used to raise cotton here. The Keach family did. And of course, all this is developed in here and then that's the house I lived in over on High Street. But I was talking about that street north of town that had the concrete banisters. That's Arch Street or North Street. Here's the airport. There's Airport Road. It lined right up. That road went right across there. The railroad tracks went right across here until 1940 and they removed them. And of course there's another picture of downtown Nettleton that, like I remember it. Another major happening was a, a guy named Elvis came here uh, Mr. Coker was approached by the class of 1955 to sponsor something to raise money. These go on uh, senior class trips. Well, they tr was wanting to get uh, Johnny Cash to come here. Well, Johnny Cash was busy, so they said, well, I got this cat named Elvis. They said, well, well, we'll get Elvis here. The girls knew of Elvis. So they got Elvis here, and he played in this building right here, the old gym. And this is, these are actual copies of photographs of Elvis that the girls got when, when, he went, when he came here to sing. But they, they said that the revenue from that night was like $52 and Elvis only got like $25 to pay his band with and for his gas because no one showed up. You know, he said, well, it was Elvis. Why didn't someone show up? Well, that'd be like me going over to the gym singing right now. No one's gonna come listen to me sing. But you know, he just was not that popular uh, in 1955. Uh, we, we date the time that he was here, the end of March of 1955 to early April of 55 because he'd got a, a new Cadillac and this is basically what he looked like when he, when he sang here at Nettleton. We don't have any photographs when he sang here but uh, I thought y'all'd like to see what he looked like in the 1950s. And you know, I was talking about where names come from. Well when Nettleton was annexed into Jonesboro, we had like eight streets that was named the same streets that Jonesboro was. Well, the post office couldn't have that. You know, you can't have two streets that name the same. Because Woodrow Street is on the north side of Jonesboro. Well, that was over there close to Arch Street. Well, they was going to name it uh, Wilson Street or something like that. Well, Mr. Irby lived over there, and he had two or three rent houses. He said, well, I want you to name the street after me because I own more property over here. So they named it Irby Street. Well, then uh, North Street, there was already a Jonesboro North Street. They called it Arch Street. Jackson Street was changed to Long Street, Alice to North Kathleen, Elm to, to Wo uh, Willow, and then Church Street right over here was named Boydston Street. So that's, what, and, and my grandfather, he was one of the first aldermen to Jonesboro, and he's the one who made the resolution to change it. And you know, Nettleton's more than a one dog town. We had, we had hotels, drug stores, and then at one time you had to have these license plates to pay taxes, your city taxes. If you lived in the city, 
you'd have to put these on your on your car showing that you pay taxes. Uh, I told uh, Craig sometime he'd need to take you all to the museum. We have a bunch of artifacts from an old town Nettleton over there. This is one of the old fire trucks. I can remember them having this fire truck and using it on fires in the area. And they had wooden uh, water lines through town. And you know, you talk about a fire plug. Well, they used to have a wooden plug when they had a fire. They'd pull the plug out, put a hose in there, and that's back when they had the pumps that they would pump the water out. So that's where the fire plug gets its name from that wooden plug. You know, you, you have, you have, do y'all have soccer here at school? All right, you have soccer, you have tennis, you have uh, football, basketball, boys and girls, uh, basketball, softball, baseball. Well, this was the last year they had girls basketball back then. For some reason, they, they quit having girls basketball. And if you notice, that's the same coach that was on the boys basketball team. You know, you got two or three coaches for every sport here. Back then, you had one coach for the girls, and he was the same coach for the boys. And of course, this is what the girls' cheerleading outfits, and that's what homecoming looked like. And, and guys, look at that basketball backboard. It ain't it nothing like they use now. And this was the last city council from Nettleton in 1958. That's my grandfather. They was being sworn in. And, uh, and then in May, they was annexed into Jonesboro by, by a vote of two to one. And that's the last mayor of Nettleton, Mr. Powell. He was a shoe repairman uh, on Main Street. Uh, most of y'all, do y'all know where the police uh, supply place is over here on Nettleton Avenue? That sign's at the corner of their property. That was, that's where this was. And uh, that's where Main Street was. But as soon as it was annexed, they put that sign up to let you know where the city limits of Jonesboro was. That's as far as Nettleton went back then. This is the runner-up to the state basketball championship. Uh, they played Mulberry down at Truman. Truman had a new gym, so they got the bid for the basketball tournament. So Nettleton went down there to play in the tournament. They was ahead like 15 points at halftime, so the coach started putting in the subs toward uh, the end of the game. Well, Mulberry got the momentum and got ahead, so then the coach put the starters back in. They couldn't get the momentum back. They got beat by two points in the state championships. Uh, this is another picture of downtown Nettleton. That's the Bank of Nettleton, and uh, that's Pardue's department store. This was the hardware part of it. This was the grocery store on this other end was the ladies' apparel. It was like an early Walmart. In one building, you could go in there, get anything you want of. It's just about unheard of. Another guy that graduated from Nettleton was about 1951 was a guy named Bobby Lee Trammell. He came up with the Arkansas twist. You know, Chubby Checker did the uh, regular twist. Well, he came up with the Arkansas twist and had a lot of local fame and regional fame. But he was also in the House of Representatives of Arkansas in 1997. Now, girls, hey, do you like it? Every girl had to wear these PE outfits. They was a drab blue, and that's what the girls wore when they took PE here. And look at them hairdos, man. I, they'd, they'd take a half a day teasing their hair. And then, of course, this team was 40 and three. They won the state championship. This is Jerry Rook. He scored 52 points in the championship game uh, in 1961. <coughs> and then this team went to state tournament. And this is my high school team. That's myself, that's Coach Rook. And here's a guy, he was six foot seven on the same team. And then this, these, this is uh, 1960, 61, 62. That team went 96 and 27. So they had, they had a pretty good record for that time. This, this is the first football team. Uh, that's Principal Carter's daddy. That's Phil Carter. He's an ex-state trooper. This is Johnny Pardew. He scored the first touchdown in 1965 here at Nettleton. That's Wayne Dorton. And I'm on the chain game. I had a bad knee. I didn't play football, played basketball. And then we had a tornado my senior year. Normally they let out the seniors two weeks before school was out. This was the first year that they said, okay, we're not gonna let you out of school early. Well then about two nights after that, a tornado came through. I mean, it blew everything away except the cafeteria and the gym and everything east of here down Ray Street, nothing. In fact, there was a story there was babies killed and grandparents killed. But there, there was a man and woman was building a house out behind their current house. And uh, they were standing on their back porch looking toward their old, their new house. Said a tornado picked them up in the air and they went over tops. He looked down on trees. They was up in the air and when they hit the ground, 
This guy said, I knew my wife was dead. And so he said, when he crawled, he was banged up. He crawled out over a roll of carpet and a refrigerator and wash machines and stuff. When he went in, after he took care of his body, wife's body and everything, when he went back the next day to take care of his stuff, someone stole his carpet and all of the stuff out of his house and everything. Looting was very bad. Uh, so they had to get the National Guard out. But this, this, that's the annex, what you call the annex. That was the high school. I had Arkansas history in this class right here, and this was my home room over here. But you can see how bad it was. You, you can just imagine standing out on that ground with all that debris flying around. This was the cafeteria. We was practicing baccalaureate. That was before we graduated. That's me in the back row there. But uh, that's our ag teacher. But uh, this, is this, this is a school board, you know, to, to be on a school board, you know, 20 years is something special and everything. But uh, my grandfather's on the school board like 20 years. This guy's on there like 45 or 50. He was on there like 38 years. These, these guys, was a, he, he ran a department store. He had uh, land interest. My grandfather had a feed store and some rental property. But another major event was in 1983, they had a bad bus wreck in a place called Uno. They was going down the bus, was going too fast down 212, and the road went kind of straight, but they got them put a jog at the end to make people slow down. The bus driver didn't remember being that way, so he swerved to go through it. When he got on Highway 18, it angled this way, and it flipped the bus over, and it killed nine people that day. I mean, it was there were students from Nettleton on the bus, and I think there was a school teacher or uh, helpers that was, was killed that day, but it was... It's a pretty sad day. I, I remember it was just kind of eerie walking around town knowing that so many people got killed from Nettleton. And then veterans mean a lot to me and we had two guys from Nettleton that was killed in World War II. They was brothers. And then this is a guy I went to school with, David King. He was killed in Vietnam. But this is the way the campus buildings look basically when I went to school here. That's the high school, the gym. That's the ag building. That, that's the elementary school. It was built in 1955. And that's the cafeteria, and there's the outdoor toilet, and that's the high school. And the governor of Arkansas came here in 1950 and helped dedicate what y'all call the annex. That's the annex right there. But like I said, that's my homeroom class, and that's my American history class. And then there's Keats' gin. You can see what the gin looked like. Uh, there's a few businesses still carries the Nettleton name, the uh, Nettleton Concrete Works. And there's White Way Market that used to be, that's over there where the Dollar General is over there on Highland. And that's what Main Street Nettleton looked like in, in 2000 before they built the Old Town Nettleton building. And of course, when I did this slideshow in 2007, that was the high school there, so I gotta get another picture of your high school. And that's what the Nettleton looked like in 2017. And of course, the, the only old buildings left is the bottom part of the Bank of Nettleton there's the old pool hall, and there's a, um, a dry cleaners right there. That's basically all this. Well, this building right here is not that old, but it was one of them from older Nettleton. It was a barber shop. But uh, my brother helped me do this thing. We was on the basketball team together. That's when I was in 10th grade, and he was a senior. That's when he was growing up. But uh, that's basically the Nettleton I remember. It's nothing what you're, like what y'all see today. And, one of the devastating things that I remember when going to school here was when Kennedy was shot. I was in the eighth grade and I was in one of them buildings in the annex and you know when the president of the United States gets shot it's pretty dramatic and everything. You don't know what's going on. And then uh, we would have H-bomb drills. You know they would they would blow the whistle we would get up underneath our desk you know like they do for tornado drills and stuff. You know if the H-bomb hit here that's not going to help you out too much. And then on certain days, they would let you out of school until you go home as fast as you could to time yourself going home to get off campus and everything. But uh, I enjoyed going to school here at Nettleton and, and, you know, graduating here in 68. I always tell people it's the year of the great tornado because uh, that's the kind of marks the history of, of Nettleton. Uh, the people who went to school at Nettleton, there's kind of three benchmarks. 1958 and before was still called Nettleton. 68 is when most of the campus was destroyed. Then after that, it's a different school today than it was when I went there. This gym right here is phenomenal. Your fine arts center is, is something else. It's a place to be proud of, and I hope you are, and I appreciate your attention and your time. Thank you.
Uh, I got something for Craig here. I'm gonna make Greg, Craig, an honor, honorary mayor of, of Old Town Nettleton. Yeah. Yeah. This, this and 50 cents will get you a glass of water. It's a dream come true for me. Congratulations, well deserved. Thank you, thank you very much, Danny. Danny Honnold, everybody. Danny Honnold. Uh, one thing, and if y'all have questions, y'all feel free to ask, but one thing that, uh, it struck me as he was talking, he said the first basketball team was called the Nettleton Orioles. Right. So that, our, our school mascot was the Oriole. Right. At first. The bird. Um, when did that change to Raider? How did that come about? Shoff Bird was the basketball coach. He's a, he was a fan of Texas Tech. And he was uh, he was in charge. You know, he liked the, is it the Red Raiders? What do you yep. call the? Texas Tech. Yep. Texas Tech. So, so he called them the Raiders because of the Red Raiders. You know, it was a guy with a cape and a mask. Well, then, since Arkansas State had the Indians, well, they decided, well, that they needed to go with an Indian thing as a Raider and everything. It worked out pretty good. So you said it was like, at first it was black and orange. When did gold come about? Uh, about, about, the, about the early 1950s, late 40s. Yeah, yeah. Were we ever the Red Raiders? That's something, something like I heard one time we were the Red Raiders. Yeah. We were the Red Raiders. Well, they, he just called them Raiders. He didn't okay. call them Red Raiders. He just called them Raiders. All right. And then, then in the early 1950s, when there, or late 40s and 50s, when Mr. Coker got here, they put a couple of Indians in the annual. They, they went to Memphis and found these dolls. So you look at some of the old annuals, they got some of these dolls and stuff, and uh, that's when I went, went uh, I guess the late 40s when they started adopting the Indians because of Arkansas State. Yeah. When was they changed it to gold? Black and gold? Black and gold they changed during the late 40s. And then they changed it. It was called the Oreo. Then they called it Oreo, Oreo like the bird, like the Baltimore Oreo. Like the Baltimore Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're talking about cookie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too, man. But uh, then they, they adopted just they went with the Indian theme in the late '40s and '50s, and for some reason they went to black and gold. Jerry Rook, all-time leading scorer here at Nettleton, all-time leading scorer at Arkansas State, without a three-point line. Was he uh, was he an outside shooter mainly? Could he play inside as well? They, they had a six-foot-eleven guy named John Dixon who played there, but uh, he would take the ball and he'd go out above the, the circle. They had passed him the ball and he'd jump in the air and he when he would shoot he'd flick it one of his feet. I mean he he just had a perfect sweet shot. I mean it wasn't the bottom of the net. I mean. It, he was, he was killer. We played the All-American Redheads in the old gym. Of course, the old gym wasn't as big as your gym here. He crossed the center court and shoot a jump shot, nothing but this. I mean, he was, he was lights out. I ain't gonna go. Yeah. And see, that basketball team that he played on in high school, he was 6'5", they had 6'4". Jimmy Pardue was like 6'1", 6'2", Harold Harvey 6'3". It was a pretty large team for that time and everything. It was, it was, it was pretty stellar. Was uh, was football immediately popular whenever it came on? Campus? Oh yeah, yeah. It, it used to they had homecoming court for basketball. Well, the first year they had football here, homecoming went to football and everything. And it was a big deal. I, I remember seeing the first uh, touchdown. The first time we beat someone was it was up at Pocahontas. I went up there. Of course, they're the Redskins, another Indian team. They, uh, they won like twelve to nothing. And I think that was the second year. And I think the year I graduated was the first non-losing year. I think it was like four, three, and one. Four, three, and two, or something like that. 